what is going on, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with the wrap round. We're going to be breaking down the NHL action going down on Thursday, January 25th, 2024. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe to our channel and smash that thumbs up. You know, Pick Dogs wouldn't be where it is today, and the, and the wrap round certainly wouldn't be what it is without your guys' love and support. So thank you so much for that. If you're looking for my best bets on the board, make sure you head to PickDogs.com. Click the Premium Picks tab at the top of the page. Got something for everybody today. Got some college hoops on the board. Got some NHL. Definitely going to look to make some money as we head into another loaded weekend of action. You can hop on a daily pass, but the best value, I'm telling you guys, check out a long-term pass, whether it's just with me or you pair me up with another one of your, or even any of your other favorite handicaps. We have a multi cap of promotion. And remember to use that code PICK at checkout for 15% off your purchase. But, uh, you know, that's down the road. We're talking about, uh, you know, late, all the action today. We still got a nine-game NHL card to look at. You guys know the drill. Let's make some money. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. Our first game takes us to Little Caesars Arena, where the Detroit Red Wings take on the Philadelphia Flyers. And right now you have two teams that are kind of headed in, in different directions. The Red Wings not playing the best, but right now Philadelphia is playing terribly. Um, their last three games to finish out their homestand, they lost by a combined score of 18 to 10. Gave up you know, an average of six goals per game, and a lot of that fell on Samuel Urson, you know, who's been really struggling, had some issues. He's given up four goals in each of his last two starts, and... Now the, the load is going to fall on Urson for the next little bit with Carter Hart away from the team indefinitely. So as much as I like Philadelphia on the road where they are 21-3 and three on the puck line this season, eh, I think we're getting a bit of a, a decent price here with Detroit, who does play their better hockey at home. If this price was heavier towards Detroit to where I can make a play on the Flyers' puck line, I mean, maybe we could have a discussion about it then. But for right now, i got to go with the Detroit Red Wings on the money line to, uh, to take down the Philadelphia Flyers. Now we head to the Bell Center where the Montreal Canadiens take on the New York Islanders and you have another struggling team here in the Montreal Canadiens who've been outscored 19-7 to over the course of their current three-game losing streak. Uh, you know, Montreal, two of those losses came to Ottawa and uh, now you got the Islanders coming into town, an Islanders team that got the win in their coaching debut for Patrick Waugh and then the game that followed, they were in at nip and tuck against the Vegas Golden Knights, did fall short in that game, but again, right there till the very end and uh, I just don't think that there's, you know, much of a reason to back Montreal here um, until they show me some signs of life. You know, the New York Islanders are still a solid team. Like I said, great coach and a lot of players. Like Patrick, I've said before, Patrick Waugh has that no nonsense, no BS style. He's going to make sure he gets the best out of his players on any given night. And I think he does here as well. I'm going to take the, uh, the New York Islanders to get the win over Montreal on the money line. Now we head to the Canadian Tire Center, where the Ottawa Senators take on the Boston Bruins. And, you know, the Boston Bruins, I had them on, uh, on Wednesday against the Carolina Hurricanes. Fell flat, and uh, now they got to pick up the pieces and take on an Ottawa Senators team that does play their better, better hockey at home. Um, you know, 12-12 and record at home compared to Boston's 13-5-6 and record on the road. Um, but to me, this price is indicative of the books thinking this is going to be a close game, and I think I tend to agree. Like I said, this is a quick turnaround for a Boston team that was so close to completing the comeback and taking down Carolina at home, and now they got to pick up the pieces, go to you know Ottawa to take on a Senators team that you know is just sort of treading water at this point. It almost feels like the Boston Bruins could be maybe looking ahead here, uh, just trying, just wanting to get in and out. But I don't, I don't know. I don't think I don't think Ottawa is going to make it all that easy. And head to head, this has been a fairly competitive matchup, you know. Um, uh, Boston's only won five of the last nine meetings. They won both meetings last year. This is the first time this year these two teams are meeting. But I think there could be some value here with the Senators in this one. So I'm going to take Ottawa plus 108. Now we head to the Emily Arena where the Tampa Bay Lightning take on the Arizona Coyotes. And the Coyotes, while well, they have been able to provide value in some spots, and they already beat the Tampa Bay Lightning earlier this season at home 3-1 to one back on November 28th. Um, I'm having a hard time getting behind the Coyotes here. The Coyotes continue to be hot and cold on the road. 8-11-3 on the road this season, but they've lost their last three road games, including the first game of this uh, this little road trip that they're on. You know, uh, they lost by a 6-2 count against the uh, the Florida Panthers. And now they got to go on the back-to-back -to, -back to take on Tampa Bay before heading to Carolina on Saturday. 
And uh, I just don't know how much of a fan I am of the spot for the Arizona Coyotes. They've scored two goals or less in each of the three road losses that they've taken in that stretch. So five combined goals, 1.6 goals per game. Against the Tampa Bay team is playing some of their best hockey of the season. Winners of six of their last seven, scoring four or more goals in uh, four of those uh, six with, uh, four, excuse me, four of the six wins. So give me the lightning here. I'm going to take them in regulation to get this minus 205 price down to something more reasonable around minus, uh, minus 130, minus 135. Now we head to the PNC Arena where the Carolina Hurricanes take on the New Jersey Devils. And the Carolina Hurricanes on a tough back-to-back here coming from Boston, like we just talked about a couple games ago, um, to take on a New Jersey Devils team that's rested and waiting for them and is 14-7-1 on the road this season where they played their much better hockey. The problem that I have here is that Carolina's won for the last five, and that was in last year's playoff series. And the Carolina Hurricanes, I just feel, are the better team with more trustworthy goaltending. You know, the New Jersey Devils, yeah, they've been able to pick up a win over the Vegas Golden Knights, but... That was a game where it was it should have been in hand for uh, for New Jersey. Vegas came out and stormed, and all of a sudden, the New Jersey Devils, despite a one and one record in their in their last uh, pair of games, have still given up eleven goals in those two outings. Again, I'm just still not sold on the goaltending for New Jersey. I think Carolina has a distinct edge in that department in this game. We saw Spencer Martin go last night uh, for the uh, the Hurricanes. Antti Ranta should get the start here. Um, I think Carolina has the edge in this one. They had the head. They've had the edge as well. So give me the Carolina Hurricanes at minus 164. You could take them in regulation on the puck line. Wouldn't be opposed to either of those plays here, but I'm taking Carolina either way in this one. Next, we head to the American Airlines Center where the Dallas Stars take on the Anaheim Ducks. And it's easy to see why, you know, the, uh, the Dallas Stars are such a heavy favorite and the Anaheim Ducks, while well, they're playing in the underdog role. This is an Anaheim Ducks team that's really started to regress Back to the old habits of the Anaheim Ducks. They're winning games here and there, but for the most part, goal scoring has been an issue. I expect it to continue to be an issue here against a Dallas Stars team and more often than not plays sound defense. On the other side of the coin, though, the Dallas Stars, while they have scored, you know, five goals plus in three of their last five games, I still don't know how eager I am to jump to Atlanta puck line with the Stars, even in a spot like this. I could, I, if, it, if it was me picking a side, I would go with the Stars puck line. Um, but I feel a lot more confident taking the under six and a half in this one. The last nine meetings between these two teams have all seen six goals or less. And uh, even if it turns into a blowout, I could see 4-1, 5-1. Um, I think Dallas, you know, keeps Anaheim at bay. And I think the Dallas Stars, well, maybe put a, a few past here, but I still don't see us getting up over six and a half here. So give me the under six and a half Stars Ducks. Next, we head to the XL Energy Center, where the Minnesota Wild take on the Nashville Predators. And these are two teams, in my eyes, that are just headed in different directions right now. You've got the Minnesota Wild that have uh, won four of their last five and three straight, scoring five or more goals in all those wins. Meanwhile, Nashville has uh, dropped three of their last four. They've scored two goals or less in all four games. And more often than not, in those four games, they're actually struggling defensively as well. They're giving up three, four, four goals. So... I just think right now, like I said, two teams headed in different directions at a near coin flip price. I think it's just too good for me to pass on here. I'm going to take the Minnesota Wild on the money line in this one to get the job done. Now we head to the Scotiabank Saddledome where the Calgary Flames take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. And back to, you know, my old sentiment about these Calgary Flames and, and Columbus as well. You got two teams in this matchup where I just do not trust the goaltending. The Columbus Blue Jackets have given up four or more goals in five of their last six games. To no one's surprise, they're probably a losses as well. The Calgary Flames, on the other hand, well, they've allowed 11 goals over the course of their current three-game losing streak. And while the Calgary Flames have done a better job defensively in the winning streak prior to that, I still think that there's some goals to be had in this game, even if Calgary bounces back. I still think that this is going to be a fairly high-scoring matchup. Yeah, I could see it being another 4-3 to three kind of game here. So I'm going to take the over 6.5, but in, it's one of these games on, uh, on Thursday's card that I'm really not rushing to the window to bet. And our final game on Thursday's card takes us to Rogers Place, where the Edmonton Oilers take on the Chicago Blackhawks. And, yep, don't adjust your, uh, don't adjust your screens. We've got the Oilers as a minus 520 favorite, but let's face it. It's for good reason. I mean, these are two teams at completely different ends of the spectrum. Um, you've got, you know, the um, the Edmonton Oilers currently riding a 14-game win streak. The uh, the Chicago Blackhawks on the road on an 18-game losing streak. 
but they're 421 and one on the road this season. It has just been terrible for the uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, and I think it's going to be terrible here. I again, I don't see any way, shape, or form that the Chicago Blackhawks keep this one reasonably close. I got to go with the Oilers here. This is going to be your parlay piece if you like throwing these in your parlay. I take in the Oilers um, puck line. I'll probably sprinkle minus two and a half as well. Like I said, this is just this is the haves versus the have-nots if I've ever seen it. So for, you're not going to be able to find much value on the puck line. But again, if you use it as a parlay piece, I wouldn't be sad at it. So uh, give me the Oilers here on the puck line. That's it. That's all the NHL action for Thursday, January 25th, 2024. If you like this content, again, make sure you subscribe to our channel, smash that thumbs up, and hit that notification bell in the description of this video below to make sure you get notified when the newest and freshest content drops here at Pick Dogs. If you're looking for my best bets, again, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium, and make sure to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Good luck.